Yes, guys. Hello. Welcome back to the Spurs Related YouTube channel. Hope everyone's doing well. A quick little video today, something a little bit different. It is an offline video, hence why we're not replying to live comments. We still absolutely adore you guys and all your comments and all your interactive points. But this is a little offline video. We thought it might do well. It, me, people might enjoy it. So basically, um, I'm actually going to let Jack explain. Jack, how you doing, mate? Mate, I'm doing well. Looking forward to this one. You know, we thought we'd get a bit creative as, you know, we're building up a community here and we thought, let's get all involved. Let's get the Premier League involved, OK? So we thought we'd have all the teams and stuff. And yeah, we thought we'd bring this to you guys. So as you can see in the title of the video, it is Premier League Predictions Weekly one, guys. So a video we're looking to do each week. Me and James having a bit of competition against each other. You know, we all uh, stick up for our own views. We stick to them and we will see who has the best Premier League knowledge by the end of the season. So it's going to be a good one, James. Would you like me to explain the scoring system and how it's going to work? Or would you like to do that yourself? Please do, Jack. I'll just pop the indicators on screen and you're good to go. Love it. So, this is an idea we've seen a few people do, but we thought, you know, we're going to put a little Spurs-related spin on it and we're going to go for it. So, it is Premier League predictions. Clue is in the title. And we're going to go through all the 10 Premier League fixtures each week and we're going to tell you what we think the score is going to be. Maybe a few goal scorers here and there with a little twist at the end for some bonus points. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. So, it's is three points for a correct score so that means you have to get the score completely right no faults and you get one point for the correct result pretty self-explanatory you'll get it as we go along guys each week we'll have a little review on how we're getting on keep keep track of the scores i'm sure i'll have my score next to my name and so will james we'll get weekly guests on guys and yeah i'm sure it will be a good one right shall we kick things off with the First game of. Ah, the hang on, you you forgot one oh. thing, Jack. One thing that's the Spurs related spice is there is going to be an extra three points for the person if they guess correctly the team that scores the most amount of goals in one game for the week. Let me give you an example. So there's ten Premier League games a week. Man City are playing Bournemouth. I'm going to say I think Man City are going to score the most out of all the ten games. They might win 5-0. And if they I get it right, I get an extra three points for the week. Jack might go, well, Liverpool, I fancy them to beat Fulham 4-0, which is going to be the highest scoring game and the you know the, the team that scores the most amount of goals. It's not the winning margin, but the team that scores the most amount of goals gets an extra little three points bonus. And what you said about the guests, Jack, I think it's great. I'm going to get some amazing guests on. We're yeah. going to get some fantastic guests that are going to have some pretty good football knowledge. And we can do a little league table in terms of maybe every week, say Ari Schottsberg gets 20 points. And then, I don't know, Jack Kinnicky comes on and gets 21 points. We can do a little league table maybe. Maybe um, we'll get loads of teams involved. Maybe we'll even have Liverpool fan channels. You know, I'm sure Joe McBride will be keen to get his opinions on here. We'll have multiple people, guys. So it's an exciting, interactive thing that everyone can get involved in. I'll tell you what, guys, I want you to have your notepads, your phone in your notes at home. Tell me. How many points did you get for this? We'll have a little predictions table and you can tell us in the comments on our live videos how many points did you get. For me, this is a really exciting one. I'm looking forward to hopefully portraying my Premier League knowledge as I'd like to think I've got a bit. So, yeah, no, it's going it's to be a good one. Shall we kick things off now? Have I got ahead of myself or are we ready to go? Yeah, go ahead of yourself, Jack. We've explained how it works. Let's go. And what is the first game of the Premier League week? It is Crystal Palace against yeah. Woolwich Arsenal. and. Jack, I'm going to let you, it's your, it's your idea, it's your series, it's time for you to take it away, I think, mate. I like it. Right, so, big game to kick things off on a Friday night at 8, eight o'clock. I'm really excited for this one, to be honest. I think it's going to be a great, great, great game. Great game. Um, you've seen Arsenal have had a fantastic pre-season, it's clear to see, winning 6-0 uh, in their last game. So, to be honest, to kick things off, I am expecting a Arsenal victory. It pains me to say I'm going to go with an Arsenal 2-1 win. I don't think Crystal Palace are an easy task at all. So, I think they're going to put up a test. But I think Arsenal will just be too strong and will be looking to start off their campaign strong. So, I'm going to go with a 2-1 victory to Arsenal. OK, do you know what? I was going to say the same. And I almost don't want to change my predictions just because you've said it. Because I was going to go 2-1. I think Arsenal will just eke it out and just have enough against Palace. But they have had a bit of a bogey team in Palace. And they haven't won too many games recently against them. 
Correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't got the stats in front of me, but I do believe they did lose at Selhurst Park last year. And so, exactly. although Arsenal, yeah. have up, Arsenal have upgraded, that's fair enough. But I just see Arsenal just edging it. But now I'm starting to talk my way into a draw. <laughs> so I'm going to do exactly that, Jack. I'm going for a 1-1 draw. Ooh. I think the Palace atmosphere on a Friday night is going to be electric as always. It's one of the best atmospheres in the Premier League if you've been to that ground. And for me, I think Palace won all. I think Wilfred Zaha is going to get on the score sheet. I'm giving you scorers today. Let, look at this. Okay, and I think man, probably okay. Gabriel Jesus will score as well because he has been on fire in friendlies. But then again, it's friendlies. Will that translate in the Premier League? Let's wait and see. But I'm going for a one all on this game. I think, it, to be honest, James, I think it's a very fair assumption. We all saw helping Spurs out Palace winning 3 0 at Selhurst Park. So for me, I'd love Palace to get another one over Arsenal and kicking their campaign off right with Patrick Vieira obviously playing his former club. So, we've got Liverpool v Fulham on the second game. Midday kickoff, 12.30 kickoff um, on the Saturday morning just before Spurs' game. I've gone for a Liverpool 3-0 victory away uh, at Craven Cottage. For me, I just think Liverpool are going to be too strong. Look at their team. Look at how well they played in the Community Shield. Uh, I think they're going to be unstoppable, really. I think they're going to look to start off strong. They've got new signings, Darwin Nunes, maybe Fabio Carvalho playing against his old team. Will he get a shout? For me, probably a bit too soon. Um, but for me, there's only one winner. I'm going with Liverpool 3-0. I can see Darwin Nunes getting a debut goal in this match for me probably coming off the bench Luis Diaz looking to impress for me a great fantastic player already in my Premier League fantasy team he was mesmerising last year especially in the Champions League um, and Mohamed Salah keen to probably get another golden boot for me there's only one winner 3-0 Liverpool like it I, and again you're, you're in the vicinity of what I would say so if I was to go first, then I would have probably gone three 0 Liverpool. But I'm going to go. I'm going to go Fulham one, Liverpool four. I think it's going to be a goal fest at lunchtime. It's going to be goals galore. People are going to be full on goals by three o'clock. I think Mitrovic is going to get on the score sheet. Maybe even a, a sloppy little penalty. And I think uh, I think uh, the four goals at Liverpool, if I had to guess, would probably be Salah. Jota probably he's just signed a new contract, want to celebrate uh, signing that deal. And um, yeah, I could see Nunes come off the bench as well. So I'm going 4 on Liverpool. OK, uh, to be honest, I like it as well. You're switching it up, aren't you? You're thinking off the spot. You don't want to copy me totally. So let, let me go first on this one. How about that? Let me go first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you go first, mate. You go first. OK, so Bournemouth, Aston Villa, Bournemouth, welcome back to the Premier League. I know we do have one watch today. He's a Bournemouth fan, so good luck to you if you are watching. But Bournemouth, I think, are going to struggle this year. I've said it already. I think they're going back down. Villa, yes, they didn't have too much of a good season last season compared to what they did the previous season under Dean Smith when they had Coutinho coming in, obviously, last season. Or was it even the season before? It's been it's been so, so many uh, games. But he did make an impact, especially at the start. Obviously, he did come on and score against, I believe, Liverpool um, like on his debut. It was absolutely crazy. So, for me, that was Man United, actually, wasn't it? But for me, I think, honestly, that Bournemouth are going to lose their first game. I think it's going to be 2-1 to Aston Villa. And I think, I think they're just going to have enough. And I think Bournemouth may score first, but Villa had the Premier League experience to see this one through. I can promise you, me and James have not shared our results. We kept it very, our cards very close to our chest. And funny enough, James, I have actually gone for two on Aston Villa as well. And I'm not just saying it. I think they're new additions with Diego Carlos, Felipe Coutinho, obviously now being signed on a permanent, uh, Kamara from Rangers. I think they've made some fantastic uh, signings. And for me, uh, as I say, Kamara from Rangers, I think it's Marseille. Um, anyway, I think they're they're going to impress this season. A first full season with Gerard as well. I can just see them being a real force to be reckoned with this season. For me, I predict them to finish around eight in the Premier League, a lot stronger than last season. Um, I think a two-one victory is going to kick things off. Even with Scotty Park being at Bournemouth, I don't think he's going to be able to do enough to get them through this game and maybe not even stay up in the Prem. But only time will tell, James. There you go. Um, I guess I'll take this one and then we'll do two each uh, in terms of who starts. Leeds, Wolves. So Leeds just survived last season. It did come down to the last game. Wolves, 
very mediocre season. I believe they did finish around 13th, 14th place. So, again, they've struggled. They did much better in the seasons under Nuno. Uh, imagine saying that after what he was like at Spurs. But I think the Leeds are going to have a maybe, I don't know, I did predict them to get relegated and I did get slaughtered for it. But I just think Wolves are very poor as well. So, I could see this one being Leeds 1, Wolves 1. Oh my worst. You are joking, right? <laughs> this is hilarious. I wrote it down on my notepad. But um honestly, I I I'll actually... verify it on your paper, please, sir. Uh no, sir, actually, because it's got my other results and I don't want any cheating here in the Spurs related building. Uh I've gone with Leeds one, Wolves one. The reason I've gone for it is because I think at Ellen Road, it's going to be bouncing. They stayed up in the Premier League. They've made some smart additions, to be honest. You see, they've spent a lot of signings. A few people, I think, around Leeds quite excited. They have lost their arguably two best players in Phillips and Rafinha. But I think they've got quite a smart recruitment firm. Um, so, to be honest, I do think they'll be all right. And I do think they'll stay up in the Premier League. Um, and I think they're going to have a bounce. going to have a bounce around Ellen Road. And I think one is probably a fair result. I don't see Wolves scoring too many goals. You know, they're quite a defensively solid team. Um, uh, Bruno Larg, he likes, he's quite defensive. They didn't score too many goals last season, but they are uh, strong at the back. So I am seeing this being a one all draw. There you go. Bang. And it's your turn to do the honours again. But this time, Newcastle Forest, is that a Saturday three o'clock as well, I guess? Newcastle Forest is the one, James. And I'm looking forward to this one, actually, especially on match of the day. I think it's going to be a very good game. And I'm going with a 2-1 win to Newcastle. I think the Newcastle fans at St. St. James's Park are going to be absolutely buzzing. We all saw the atmosphere against Arsenal on the last day of the season. Honestly, I can see this being a fantastic game. Newcastle beating Arsenal and now their first full season with their new owners. Massive investment. We've all seen they've, they've spent maybe looking to buy James Madison for around 50 to 60 million pounds. They've brought in obviously Bruno Guimaraes, Sven Botman, so many players who are high calibre and they've got the finances to do that. Uh, Eddie Howe, I think he's a great manager as well. I think he's really going to help push on this squad. Young, exciting football. Um, for me, Forrest as well and the Steve Cooper, I think they're going to start this year. But I just don't think they're going to get this uh, opening result. And I think Newcastle are going to win this one 2-1. One. Like it, like it. So you're predicting a close game. I actually think that on top of what you've said, I think Newcastle, I, I, I think they're going to get Europa League, uh, Conference League this year. I think that Newcastle are going to start strong. Like you said, their atmosphere is going to be absolutely buzzing. They're really expecting big things. A lot of their fans will be expecting European places. I think that Newcastle will be quite um, superior here. I think Nottingham Forest did look amazing in the championship, what Steve Cooper did. And to, to get them from literally relegation places to the playoffs and promoted, promoted was incredible. Manager of the season, probably in the whole of the Football League, to be honest with you. But... For me, I think the Newcastle are going to be superior 2 0. I don't think Nottingham Forest are going to score to, um, on Saturday. I think they're a good team, but also at the same time, they're going to have a they've got a lot of new players that need to gel. The likes of Jesse Lingard, and obviously they've got rid of Jed Spence, so there's a gap there potentially. I know they've signed Nico Williams, I think, but at the end of the day, so yeah. many new faces. I think even Spurs may take longer to gel than people think. Because uh, let's be honest, the friendlies haven't convinced me that much. So Back on this game, I think Chris Wood will get on the score sheet. Um, is my little score really? predict predictor there? Yeah, I think Chris Wood will have a season where if he can avoid injury, he'll get 10 15 goals for Newcastle, which could be huge in pushing wow. them for yeah. Europa League pace. Not Callum Wilson, you see Chris Wood, Chris Wood getting the nod, do you? Yeah, Chris Wood, he's scored quite a few in the friendlies as well. I've been keeping an eye on that. I think he's a very underrated player and he did so well. You know, you saw the gap when he left Burnley. Burnley really struggled without his goals. Ashley Barnes isn't quite a knife up front for them. And obviously they've got Jay Rodriguez as well. But Max Cornet obviously helped Burnley. But let's not talk about Burnley. I just think that Chris Wood is a very underrated yeah. player. Um, so, yeah, I'm going for a 2-0 Newcastle win here. I can definitely see that. And I just feel like the Forest will get that goal just because sometimes when you have those new players around the squad, you get a buzz and everyone wants to impress. I think you've got Omar Richards joining from Bayern Munich, used to be at Reading. You've obviously got Nico Williams and Jesse Lingard. So there's a few exciting players there and I think they'll be keen to one of them to get on the score sheet potentially. Anyway, now moving on, James. Am I right to take this one? A little excited. Here we hang go. On, no, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Is this your, is this your one? Hang on a minute. <laughs> 
Yeah, it is your one. It's your honours. So, over right, to you. my honours. Let's go for it. Spurs related. It is the first game of Tottenham's campaign, and we kick it off at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, the inaugural sixty thousand seat stadium. I will be there doing a vlog, and I'm so excited. And we we will we will be playing the Saints. Um, and I am thinking Tottenham are going to win this game 2-0. I haven't gone too bold. I haven't gone too crazy. I'm just expecting it. It might take a while for our team to chat. I think Conte is going to want to make sure we're defensively solid. Nothing too crazy. I think we need the link-up play. I think Kuldewski, Son and Kane will be our starting front three. And I just think we need to get those goals, maybe a goal in the first half, settle down, play nice football, press from the front. I'd love to see more goals. But I can just see Spurs easing their way into the Premier League season. I'm winning it 2-0, hopefully. And that is my prediction. I see Kudasevsky and Harry Kane grabbing a goal. There you go. Well, oh, I haven't gone the same for this one. And I actually Ooh. was thinking about this on the way home. I changed my mind twice. And this score I've got, I can explain with, you know, full confidence. But Spurs Southampton, I was so eager to put it on screen. I put it on screen while you're still talking about Newcastle, Jack. But listen, I'm absolutely buzzing. Just to say to the watchers, if you are still watching, we're going to do a preview on Thursday night for that game. All the team news, all the predictions, all press the likely conference. lineups, everything else, all the t um, all the press conference quotes. Potentially that comes on Friday. But actually, we can obviously give you all the team news updates and everything you need to know about that game, the head-to-head -head stats and every other breakdown. So, and obviously, Andre always does his player picks as who he thinks is going to be a threat. But back to the score prediction, I think the Spurs are going to win three goals to one. And I'll tell you why. I nearly went 3-0, but I think 3-1, just because if we remember only what, seven months ago it was January and we lost 3-2 to Southampton they're a team that can't be underestimated a lot of people have them to go down I think Joe has them to go down but I just don't think they're going to go down I just think they've got too much Premier League experience and I do like their mouth uh, I do like their manager um, as well I think he's a, a solid manager and has done decent work with what he has he hasn't got an amazing team you know if you go yeah. back four five six years they had Graciano Pelle um, they had Adam Lalana. They had Sadio Mane. They had all these Watch players it. that were upper level. And now they don't really have too, too many players. And that's not me being harsh to Southampton. I just think they're doing very well for what they have. They have got yeah. some tricky players. They have got some good defensive players as well. And I just think people think that this could be a 4-5-0. There will be people predicting that. Of course there will. But it's the first game. There will be a bit of time to gel for these players needed. And I just think we will concede one sloppy goal, whether it's Eric Dyer that makes the mistake, or Damson Sanchez if he plays a part, whoever it will be, one mistake will happen. And sometimes it doesn't have to be a mistake, right? You can concede a goal to decent football. And we will sit back at one point in the game. We've seen it in the friendlies where we're the better team, but we somehow sit back and it's not the right thing to do. And I think Conte has a lot of work still to do with his team. I think we'd be being very naive to think just because we signed six players, we're not going to be going into any kind of top classic Tottenham way where we, you know, switch off for a minute. It happens in football and I can see it happening once in this game. I hope I'm wrong and I hope we keep a clean sheet, but I think 3-1 Tottenham and I'll be very happy with that result. Totally agree. Points on the board. That's important. Getting the first win out of the way on the opening day of the season. I'll be more than happy with that, James. All right. Goal scorers. I'm going Hung Min Son, Harry Kane, and I think I nearly said what I knew I can't say what I was gonna say. I'm gonna say it. Richarlison off the bench. Bang. Woo! There you go. There you go. Um cool. So it's over to Everton, who just survived last season under Fat Frank against Chelsea. Now Listen, I think this one is actually a hard one because Chelsea haven't really done a lot of business yet. They're doing it all last minute. They're really close to signing Mark Cucurella from Brighton, which is I'm very jealous of. I think he's a completely amazing player and it's a massive loss for Brighton if they lose their two best players in one window. But Everton, you look at their squad and it's so mediocre. I mean, Richarlison's gone. They haven't really replaced him, but they spent the money. It's it's kind of crazy. They got James Tarkovsky, I think, is a decent player from Burnley, but I don't know. I just think Everton are going to struggle this season again, and I'm going for 
Chelsea three, Everton one. Okay, right. I've come from Kai massive... Havertz, Kai Havertz, Mason Mount. I'm not going to name them all, but I think they'll be on the score sheet. Okay, I like it. Well, you're really giving us the goal scorers today, James. I'm really enjoying it, right? There you go. Come back to bite it when it's wrong, eh? I'm joking. Ah, I'm so so some of my one, right? I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. Well, I'll actually come from a completely different angle. And I am actually predicting a surprise opening day weekend result. I've gone for an Everton 2-1 victory, right? There is a method to my madness. Okay, I think Goodison Park, Frank Lampard returning against Chelsea. I think we all know during their relegation battle last year, they did get a result against Chelsea. And who scored in that game, James? It was Tottenham's new man, Richarlison. Yes, they don't have him anymore because he has joined us. But I just see Everton getting a result. There's always a freak result on the opening day. And I think this is going to be the one. I think Everton's new boy, Everton's new boys, Chelsea's new boys are going to take a while to bed in. Um, fit into two show system like Kula Bali, like Sterling, uh, obviously linked with Kukurea, even Wesley Fafana. Um, I just think it's going to take a while for, um, for the new owners to to make their mark on the squad, for the new additions to to fit in, as I've said. So I think Everton 2-1 at Goodison Park. I think it's going to be rocking. They've always oh, got a good atmosphere there. And I'm just going to go, I've gone with that, to be honest. Maybe, maybe stupidity. But why not, hey? Why not? I'm if trying to get some... right. If you're right, the start next video and you win this week on that, I will bow to you because that's an unreal shout because I don't see that happening. But you could be right. And this is the joy of this new prediction show that we hope you guys enjoy. But Leicester Brentford is next on my list. And I think this is actually probably the hardest game to predict. And I'll tell you why. Because most people will have Leicester down as favourites. But actually, if you think about it, Leicester didn't perform like they should have done last season. A lot of the reason was they had Jamie Vardy injured for a lot of the season. They had Harvey Barnes injured for a lot of the season. And I think these players are back. So I just think, I th I, I, I'm still undecided on this. Do you know what? I'm going to go for a Leicester 2-1 win, but I think it'll be a tight game. I don't think anyone's running away with this one, but I could be completely wrong. But obviously Brentford missing without Christian Eriksen, who's gone to Manchester United as well. I think 2-1 Leicester, and I don't have a lot to say. I think Jamie Vardy will be on the score sheet. OK, I like I like that point of view, but I actually think Leicester are going to be keen to make a mark. I think they had a poor season by their standards last year, a lot of injury problems, and now with a full pre-season under their belt, the likes of James Ch uh, Justin, Ricardo Pereira uh, will be returning to action. I think their defence will be a lot more stronger, a lot more stronger, a lot stronger. Um, and I think it's going to be a 2 0 Leicester win. I can see Pats and Dak again on the score sheet. And maybe what? A surprise package just because he's in my fantasy Premier League. James Justin also getting on the score sheet. And I'm going to go with a 2 0. Brentford assigned Mikko Damsgaard. I can see them two having nil. a win. 2 0 Leicester. 2 0 Leicester. Two nil, um, and they signed another Denmark international replacing Ericsson with Damsgaard. And for me, that could be a very smart signing. We all remember the goal he scored uh, at the Euros against England, nearly crushing our hearts. But as we know, Harry Kane come back and scored that penalty rebound. Um, so, yeah, 2 0 Leicester. I can see them wanting a strong start to the season. And I think they will get it. There you go. Now, the last two. So it's your turn to predict first. Oh. And I think, I guess we're on the Sunday realms now. Was Leicester Brentford thing? I think, that's a Sunday Sunday game? Well. I think that's a Sunday. I think it's a 12 2, unless it's a 2 2 4 30. I think that might be it. So Leicester Brentford is a Sunday. So the Everton Chelsea is the 5 30 yeah. on the Saturday. The Leicester Brentford game is the 2 o'clock on the Sunday. And then the 2 o'clock also on the Sunday. I'm not sure there which one are. on TV. I'm guessing it's this one because it looks like a better game. Yeah, the Man United, Man United, United versus Brighton Old Trafford. And Jack, yeah. it's your turn. Well, Eric Ten Hag. I think it's going to be a very interesting team selection for this one. Will Cristiano Ronaldo start? We've all seen the, the antics with Ronaldo this summer. I think he did play the latest preseason game. I think he had quite a strong game, according to some Man United fans. But for me, I think Graham Potter has got Brighton played some fantastic football. Another year with his methods. I don't think they've signed a striker yet. And for me, they are crying out for a goal-scoring striker. They really need it. And if they could get someone who could score 10 to 15 goals a season, 
honestly, I think they'd be in a slight chance of competing for Europa Conference space. So for me, maybe that's an outsider's opinion, but I think they play fantastic football and they're always a joy to watch. They're missing Basuma, who is signed for Spurs, I can proudly say. Um, but for me, I think Eric Ten Hag is one going to make his mark at Old Trafford and I think they're going to win this game 3-1. I can, and I can see Ericsson getting on the score sheet. I think he won't start, but I think he'll come on. And I'm also going to predict Jaden Sancho to bag a brace. So there you are. 3-1 mm-hmm. uh, to Man United. They're going to make the mark. Ten Hag is going to be happy with this result, but will it happen throughout the season? Time will tell. Brighton scorer as well? Brighton scorer, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Tariq Lamptey. I don't think he's available. Could be wrong, but there you go. That is. No, I, uh, think I thought he's still injured. Maybe you're right. But anyway, my prediction for this isn't a 3 1, but I do think Man United are going to actually comfortably win this game. I do understand what you mean about Graham Potter, but if you think about it, probably Cucurella isn't going to play because he's going to be going elsewhere. The Sumer's obviously at Tottenham, and they've even got to the point where they haven't got a left wing back properly. So they're playing Leonardo. Drew Trossard at left wing back, who scored a hat trick from left wing back in a friendly the other day against Espanyol. But I think that Brighton are going to struggle in the Premier League this season. I think I put them as 13th or 14th in my prediction. But now they're losing Cucurella, I would be inclined to change that to maybe a couple of places lower. I think that's a big, big, big blow unless they replace him. Do you think they will invest that money? As you said, they... pounds for a left back. That is a lot of money. Talk but, about but they haven't got long. They haven't got long to buy players, and they might panic buy. So I don't know. True. It takes time to get you know replace a player of that calibre. I think this is going to be Manchester United two, Brighton zero, nil, and I think that Cristiano Ronaldo will silence all the talk about him going and everything else, and I think he's going to get a brace. And the Sui will be bringing round Old Trafford. Um, right. There you go. Last but not least, actually it is least because it's the Spammers. It is West Ham versus Man City. And I, can I go, is it my turn? Because technically you've got five now. Off. Hmm? Tell us, tell us. You, you okay. start. I think that this is going to be my Biggest goals. Actually, no, no, it's not. Wait, what did I say for Liverpool? I said 4-1. So that's my that's my highest goals um, tally. So that's who I think is going to score the most goals this week, Liverpool. I think this is going to be West Ham 1, Manchester City 3. And I think that Erling Haaland will get on the score sheet and break. I say the duck is his Premier League debut. But after a questionable performance in the Community Shield final... Um, Community Shield final? There's only one game. The Community Shield, sorry. It's too busy talking about competitions. Um, and I think it'll be 3-1 Man City. I think it'll be comfortable in the end. West Ham may get one back at, say, 2-0, make it 2-1 and be a, a nervy game, maybe. But then City will show their class. They have got an abundance of absolute world-class players throughout their squad. That is the difference. And I mean, yes, they did get schooled by Liverpool a little bit, but they're still a much better team than West Ham. And I think that Man City are going to be three one winners. Wow. Okay. And funny enough, I've gone for the exact same result. <laughs> I have gone for Man City three, West Ham one. Um, I can see Haaland scoring. Honestly, I think he's going to be a force to be reckoned with this season. I can see him getting twenty plus goals. Yes, he didn't have the best game in the Community Shield, but if you watched him closely. He was getting in the mo- he was getting in fantastic position. His movement is unbelievable. He's a presence in the air. His left foot is like the amount of thunderous strikes he scored for Dortmund last year was incredible. And for me, I think he's going to be a joy to watch. Man City have got a different outlook. They're going to be looking to get balls in behind. They can switch different play styles. They can even play. They've got world class players like Foden, Bernardo Silva, even Kevin De Bruyne that can play in the nine. Their rotation is going to be crazy for me. Every time I watch them play, I'm mesmerised because Pep Guardiola has them playing that tiki-taka style football. And yeah, once again, they are probably the favourites to win the Premier League and they're going to kick it off with a 3-1 win against West Ham and I think Bowen will be the scorer for them. So yes, guys, 
This has been our little introduction, week one of our Jack and James's Premier League predictions. Plenty of guests will get on the show. I'm looking forward to this one. We have a nice weekly catch up of all Premier League football, as obviously normally it's all Spurs related. But why not? Let's bring let's bring all the clubs in, um, and I think it's going to be an exciting series, James. Absolutely, cannot wait to see. Who gets the most points this week? We'll do a little tally before predicting the next week. So expect that next week. But before we do go, guys, if you enjoy this idea, please smash a thumbs up on the video and do comment below your predictions for this week's games. That's Send nice. us exactly your score predictions and we can even get a little follower table going on if enough Ooh. of you do it. So let us know what you guys think this week in the Premier League from the 10 fixtures and we we'll see who's closest jack thanks very much for organizing this brilliant video brilliant idea we hope the spurs relatables absolutely love it like i said guys sure. smash a like on the video subscribe if you are new and guys as always you know the score come on you spurs, spurs.